the farm families of Cabot Cooperative are happy to be stuck in Vermont. Welcome to Stuck in Vermont, brought to you by Seven Days. My name is Ava Solberger, and we're here in the downtown of Waitsfield, Vermont. There's a light covering of snow over everything, and these placid waters are nothing like they were the morning of August 28th. Damages from Irene are expected to top $572 million. 1,400 homes were damaged or destroyed. 530 miles of state roads were shut down by flooding. 200 bridges were damaged. months since Tropical Storm Irene devastated the state of Vermont and we're checking back in with the people who we met in previous videos in the towns of Waitsfield and Warren and Waterbury. I was, I was actually holding that French door shut against the the wall of water when it blew in the door next to me and that was I considered that was mother nature giving me the hook. It was like okay you're out of here. We've been hit by hurricanes before but not like that. I mean I can't think of another one in my lifetime that that was that strong. Some, like the picture in and Warren, have rebuilt entirely. Lucky for them, and very good insurance. Well, since the last time you were here in, in August, right after Irene, we've been first obviously gutting and drying and uh, dehumidifying and sanitizing the entire lower level of the, the picture in. We've completely rebuilt the tracks room from studs outward rewired the entire property, done a lot of finished carpentry work in a very short period of time. I say we, but really it's it's our, our local contractors who've just done sort of heroic work in the last several months to get us back up and running. Matt, Whitney, that's you guys. <laughs> Architect David Sellers lives in Warren, Vermont. His house is surrounded on all sides by water. When we saw David's 30-foot steel bridge go flying down the river past us, it was like, that, yeah, we're gone. We're out now. David has rebuilt this bridge. He did it just in time for Halloween. Because for the past 15 years, hundreds of children have been crossing this bridge to get to his house. David called the flood biblical. And he said that is why they call it the Mad River. The Green Cup restaurant was really the heart and soul, really, of that place. You know, it was the warm, homey, comfy place. Everybody liked to come and hang out. And the Green Cup got the hardest hit, so they have the hardest job to pull everything together. And they have been working like mad. You know, their whole family and then every volunteer they can possibly get. And they have a lot to do. The value of having the covered bridge open in Waitsfield and the covered bridge in Warren open, it's a psychological benefit. It's something tangible that you could see returning to normal. In Waterbury, there were 225 homes and businesses damaged by the flood. So we're standing in Bargain Boutique in Waterbury, and when I was here last, which was about a week after the flood, all the clothes had to be taken out of here and put in bags. And now, four months later, all the clothes are back, and they were actually open again for business on October 1st. So they recovered faster than many businesses in the Waterbury area. 
Smith Alchemist Pub and Brewery in Waterbury will not be reopening. But fear not, there is a new restaurant opening in February called the Prohibition Pig. And they'll have some Alchemist beer on tap. We're also going to go and visit Jeremy Ayers on Elm and Randall Street in Waterbury. We go for a walk in the evening a lot to see whose lights are on. And I'd say at this point... Maybe a third of the neighborhood is back. Well, you're in our kitchen here at our house in Waterbury. And um, from the last time that you were here, it looks completely different than it did before. Yeah, like that corner was where we went and you showed me all the old wallpaper oh, yeah, layers right, right. that were there. Yeah, there was layers of wallpaper. You can see all the generations of wallpaper behind there. Everything was different the last time you were here. Um, the walls were open. There still was kitty litter all over the floor. All of the cabinets and appliances have been taken out. We, we've redone all the original wood floors in the house and we've put up wainscoting and um, have painted and built a new island and have new appliances and are in the middle of building new cabinets. So everything's different. Yeah, we've only been back in the house about a month, so we're still getting organized, you know. Yeah, I'm still painting. <laughs> <laughs> Projects! <laughs> I'm really ready to be back working in my studio and doing my own thing again. I'm hoping for February 1st to be back. Thanksgiving was a big goal for us to have our family here on that day. Thanksgiving is the one day of the year that this side of my family, the whole family gets together. Uh, my grandfather didn't make it back for the holiday. My grandfather passed away on the Saturday after Thanksgiving. The house is like his legacy, you know, he grew up down the street and this was his grandfather's house and he was always in love with this house. So I am carrying on his work in the house. That's right. This is like he, Fletcher would be six generations. In Wilmington, their entire downtown was underwater, affecting 40 businesses. A month after the flood, we spoke to Lisa Sullivan, who owned Bartleby's Books. On Black Friday, Bartleby's Books reopened. There was a line at the door of community members excited to greet them back to their space. Lisa and her husband, Phil, are still working on the store, but she says that customers don't seem to mind the hammering and the painting that goes on while they browse books. In Jamaica, State Representative Oliver Olson took us on a tour around town. Since we were there, the temporary bridge has been completed and Water Street has been built up even higher. As for the people who lost their homes on Water Street, their future is still uncertain and they're hoping that FEMA will buy them out. Oliver says that there's a sense of normalcy that is set in for most folks and no one wants to see another photo of a washed out road. The whole late summer and early fall is a blur. People working, scrambling, trying to get everything back together. No matter how much help anybody who's affected by the flood gets, it's never really enough. It's daunting. And four months later, they're still going at it. They're still trying to put it all together, but it's very tough. Guys, I want you to know this. I've bragged about my highway crew almost on a daily basis. The roads, it's amazing. It's really amazing because you wonder where were all those machines? Where were all those people? All these places got fixed. It was very inspiring the first few weeks. You know, it was kind of a restore your faith in humanity kind of moment. You know, my high school gym teacher was here, not because he came to see me, but because he just showed up. Harwood boys soccer team mucked out our basement, stacked all our firewood outside in a course of like three hours. Nothing chokes me up like thinking about the support that we got from our friends and neighbors through this. It's been really amazing. Waitsfield native Grace Potter and her band Grace Potter and the Nocturnals held three benefit concerts, raising about $300,000 for victims of Tropical Storm Irene.
There's still a long way to go towards recovery for many Vermonters, but we do know one thing for sure. If you're gonna get hit by a natural disaster, Vermont's a good place to be. We'll get stuck in with you again real soon. Happy 2012, everyone. We'll see you in the new year. Yeah, this is Fletcher's house now. Hi, cutie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a camera. I know, I should have it fuzzy top. Baby's like it's a fuzzy. camera. You have to be a certain kind of person to live in this state. You know that. <laughs> it's not for everybody. <laughs>